Well, hi to my YouTube subscribers. Well, I recently posted two videos that generated a lot of comments, warning on use of repeated Thai tourist visas and important warning if applying for a Thai multi-entry tourist visa. I'll put links to these in the description. And I've also gotten a few comments related to other videos. Some of these comments I thought were very interesting, and I thought I'd share them with you and my responses. So from Ibo15, Hey Robert, I just arrived on my first METV visa. Thanks for all the info and answering my questions here on YouTube. Printed out the METV in English and showed to the immigration officer. But this immigration officer just gave me a 30-day, one-month stamp. I checked the stamp and I talked to another immigration officer and that one took me back to the first officer and the first officer corrected her mistake and changed the stamp to two months, 60 days. I think you should also include this case in your video so that people know to check the time frame of their stamps. Well, this is such great advice. Thank you, Ibo. I think this applies to all of your transactions with immigration. Don't leave without verifying the stamps that you've gotten are correct. These things are much harder to fix after you leave the immigration office. So this is great advice. Thanks a lot, Ibo. This one is from Billy Bob. When I applied for my METV in the UK in August, I provided a one-way ticket and a stay of 60 days. These were accepted. Question. METVs are normally applied for in your home country, and then you fly in from your home country with the METV. Can I apply for an METV whilst outside the UK and use it to re-enter Thailand from another country, such as Laos, Cambodia, or Vietnam, for example? So I replied that you can definitely get a Thai tourist visa in a neighboring country, although I haven't done this because in this situation, I would normally re-enter Thailand on a visa exemption. I'm not certain that you can get an METV this way, but I don't see why you couldn't. Still, I have no first-hand knowledge. Then Billy Bob replied back, Thanks, Bob. I've just remembered that the application required flight ticket details. This will alert them that I'm not flying in from the UK. If it were to be refused, I could lose my application fee of 150 pounds. I guess I could ask them first and see what they say, but any response is not quick or guaranteed. Now, at this point, the light bulb went on I realized that Billy Bob was talking about getting the METV in a neighboring country, but using the e-visa program. This doesn't work. When you get a tourist visa via e-visa, you must provide a ticket from your home country or a country of real residence to Thailand. So if Billy Bob submits his e-visa application to the Thai embassy, say in Kuala Lumpur, it will be rejected because he can't show proof of being a Malaysian national or having residence in Malaysia. If Billy Bob submits the application to his home country, the UK, it will be rejected because his ticket will not originate from his home country since he'd be traveling from Malaysia to Thailand. So, you can get a tourist visa in a neighboring country, but you have to do this on paper. You have to go to the embassy. You have to use a written application. You can't use the e-visa process. So I'm glad we got this clarified. And that's something really to keep in mind, that the e-visa only works either from your home country or from a country where you have a real residence. Now I got a comment from Mike Lindell, and of course, I was wondering whether this was the My Pillow guy. Good information. I would add to anyone reading the comments, don't cross by land if it's your second or third time leaving on an METV. I had an active METV and I got denied at a Cambodia-Thailand border and was told that I had to turn around and go to the closest airport 
and fly back into Thailand. Also, make sure you have a return flight on your last 90 days. That seemed to go a long way with the immigration agent. So I thought that Mike's comment was really interesting. Now, it may be that the agent at the land crossing was enforcing the rule that you can't enter by land more than twice a year. But I thought this only applied to visa exemptions and certainly not to an METV. In general, it's so much easier in my experience to enter via airports unless you're doing a visa run with an agency, in which case immigration agents are getting some money from the agency, so it generally works out pretty well. So I think this is good advice. It's been my experience that it's always easier to enter Thailand through an airport than overland. Just my experience. You may have a different experience with that. Okay, now Ibo commented on Mike's comment and he says, solid plan. I always book a refundable or changeable ticket for before the 60 day period ends to be on the safe side. And I refund it once I'm back inside Thailand and I readjust my plans accordingly. I agree with Ibo. This is definitely the safest option as long as you can easily get the ticket changed or get it refunded. You could also get a ticket from bookonwardticket.com for $10. Now I'll put a link to my video about bookonwardticket.com in the description. The problem with using the bookonwardticket.com ticket is that it only lasts two weeks and then it vaporizes. So you could use it to get across the border, but if you need it after that, uh, you can't use it. But I think that is an alternative. And as I said, I'll put a link in the description to that video. And now we have another response from Mike. Mike says, it was at the Poipet crossing, which I suspected, by the way, that's the main crossing over land if you're going to Siem Reap in Cambodia. Uh, it was at the Poipet crossing, which apparently has become infamous for being strict once they've cracked down on visa runs. The justification for not letting me in, even though I had an active, valid visa, was I had already been in Thailand too long. Lesson learned the hard way. Fly in and out and have a ticket out from now on. So it seems that they're applying the rule that you can't spend more than 180 days in Thailand on a tourist visa in any one year. That should not be the case with an METV, but it's always the individual agent who has the final say. I am curious, uh, Mike seems to be implying that the people at the Poipet immigration office actually suggested that he come in by air. So that kind of suggests that spending more than 180 days in Thailand is okay as long as you're entering by air. That's kind of a strange thing, but these immigration rules aren't totally rational, in case you haven't noticed that. Now, I've done that crossing at Poi Pet, and it was an experience. It's a fun thing to do once. And if you haven't been to Siem Reap, I really like Siem Reap. I would definitely recommend a trip to Angkor Wat and the uh, city of Siem Reap. Very nice. Okay, and now from Aibo again. He says, I'm planning to re-enter Thailand four days before my MET ends via a flight from Saigon. Regarding the return flight, wouldn't it be better to book it in your last 60 days because the extension could theoretically be denied? Of course, you can reschedule the flight to have it in your last 90 days once the extension gets approved. Have you guys ever heard or experienced that a 30-day extension has been denied? Okay, so I answered this. Great question. I've never had an extension denied. And several times I've applied for the extension after the METV expired, but before the 60-day stamp in my passport expired, which is exactly the situation that Ibo is talking about. I think it's safe to assume that you'll get the extension, but of course, no guarantees. Now, if you're traveling on an MET, you shouldn't really need the return ticket anyway when you re-enter Thailand. So you could just wait to buy your return ticket until you get the extension. Now, in concept, when you re-enter Thailand on an METV, 
They shouldn't be asking you for a return ticket, but they may. So I think it would be an option to just wait to buy your return ticket until you re-enter Thailand and get the extension so you know that you'll be there for the full 90 days. You can get the extension 15 days after you re-enter. The rule is that you can't get the extension until you have only 45 days or less left on your stamp. So with a two month stamp, if you wait 15 days, then you can apply for the extension and then you can go ahead and buy your return ticket. There's always a chance that when you re-enter Thailand on the METV, that they will ask you for the ticket. You might have to buy it on the spot. And now we have a comment from Anthony McAndrew, who is actually a regular commenter and viewer. Very good video, Robert. Thanks. It could be that Thai immigration is cracking down on people illegally working in Thailand. Farangs who are legitimate long-term tourists, but who choose not to apply for the METV, are being affected too. So I replied, uh, hi, Anthony. Uh, I think that's true. I think Thai immigration wants people who are working to get work visas, and they want retirees to get retirement visas and so on. They're probably thinking that there is no such thing as a legitimate long-term tourist. They assume that if you're not retired and you're staying long-term in Thailand, you're probably working in some way, maybe as a digital nomad. So they're trying to push people to get real, that is non-tourist visas uh, if they're staying long-term. But I think that there are certainly cases where people are long-term tourists. They've got money saved up. They don't have to be working and they're perfectly uh, legitimate. And those are the people who probably are best off uh, getting an METV each year. Probably they'll be hassled less by immigration. And you just have to wait until you get to be retirement age and then you can get a retirement visa and there won't be any hassle. But this was followed by a very interesting comment from Ibo who says, yes, that's true. But I heard specific info from a lawyer who said that if you work remote from Thailand for a company in Europe, and probably also the USA, you will get taxed in Europe because your salary is paid by that European company. Thailand has no double tax law or agreement because they use the territorial tax law. Some countries have tax agreements with Thailand. Check if your country has one with Thailand and what it says. So I wrote back that I thought this was absolutely true. And I know this because I did a four-year assignment in Switzerland from the U.S. Uh, when I was working for IBM. So I paid taxes both in Switzerland and the U.S. and IBM reimbursed me for the extra taxes that I paid. It was horrendously complicated, but I really didn't have to deal with it because IBM had Price Waterhouse handling the whole thing. But I think this is a really good idea. If you're working remotely in Thailand, you should probably consult with a lawyer to make sure you understand the tax implications and whether or not you need a work visa. You don't want to find yourself being kicked out of Thailand. Okay, and now I got a comment from Regis Sings. So he says, also depends on the airport. DMK is much more strict than BKK. Also, avoid female agents. They are tough and will scrutinize you more closely. Well, another commenter agreed with this, although I'm not sure that he agreed with the DMK versus the BKK or the female agents or both. So I'm just passing on the information. I have no idea if female agents actually scrutinize you more than the male agents. However, it wouldn't surprise me if the agents at DMK were stricter than agents at BKK. At BKK, you get more international tourists arriving from their home countries. At DMK, you get more people re-entering from neighboring countries. These agents may be used to scrutinizing arrivals more closely because they tend to be re -entry. Now I'll take a minute to put in a plug for my novel, Slaughtering Girl. This book tells the story of an extraordinary girl born in China 
before the 1911 revolution that ended the Qing dynasty. The girl is extraordinary for both her size and her skill in the art of slaughtering, a talent that brings her great fame. Think of her as Xena the Warrior Princess, set in 20th century China. The book is available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats. I think you'll enjoy it. I particularly recommend the audiobook read brilliantly by Kathleen Strecker. See the description of this video for order information. And now back to our video. Okay, now from a user with sort of a hexadecimal name that I won't try to pronounce. Thank you, Robert. I just have a couple of questions. I just renewed my passport, so I don't have any stamps. Can I send the stamps of my other passport? So my reply was, uh, hi, yes, you can supply the stamps from your previous passport if you've had stamps in the past year. They won't have a problem with this. Now, as far as I know, there's no minimum age. If anybody out there knows otherwise, please comment. In fact, if you traveled with your family, you would be required to file an individual application just as you're doing, although to meet the financial requirements, there are some special features you can take advantage of. I'm traveling alone and 17. Is that a problem for them, meaning for immigration? Now, as far as I know, there's no minimum age. If anybody out there knows otherwise, please comment. In fact, if you traveled with your family, you would be required to file an individual application just as you're doing, although to meet the financial requirements, there are some special features you can take advantage of. I'm staying with friends. Is it easier just to book a hotel or send the invitation letter? So this question has some interesting aspects to it. So even if you stay with friends, you should not need an invitation letter for a tourist visa. Are you applying from the UK? Their application talks about an invitation letter, but this is not needed. And I made a video about this. The UK application is really broken, and I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. So to the best of my knowledge, you can just supply the name and address of the friend that you're staying with. Now, they must file a form TM30 with immigration for the length of your stay. But you can't file that. The person you stay with has to file that. Okay, now having said this, I think it's actually safer to book a hotel for your first night and go ahead and stay there. Give that to immigration as your hotel reservation. Then move to your friend's place. But your friend still has to file that TM30 on your behalf. Hotels do this automatically, and most of them use an app. But if you stay with friends or you stay in an Airbnb, make sure that a TM30 has been filed with immigration. If you don't do this, it is possible to get into trouble. And this has happened to people. Oh, and finally, at the end of my comment back to him, I said, uh, wow, 17 and traveling to Thailand on your own. What a blast. And uh, yeah, he's going to have a great time. Uh, okay, now I have another comment from Billy Bob. He asks, how many days is an SCTV valid for and how many times can you extend it? Okay, when you arrive on an SCTV, you get a stamp for 60 days from the date of arrival. Then you can get one 30-day extension, but after that you must leave. Now I mentioned before for the extension, you can't get the extension when you have more than 45 days remaining on your stamp. So when you come in on a 60-day stamp from an STV, you need to wait 15 days before you go to immigration and get your extension. But the extension will give you the full 90 days. It's not dated from the date that you apply for it. It's dated from the end of your stamp. So you get the full 90 days, no matter when you apply for the extension. So you can get up to 90 days on SETV. I don't think you'll have a problem if you spent a few days out of Thailand 
then returned on a visa exemption, assuming that you come from a country for which visa exemption is supported. Now, that would give you an additional 60 days, assuming that you get an extension on top of that visa exemption. Now, also, you have to use your SETV within 90 days of its date of issue. So you don't want to get an SETV more than 90 days in advance of your actual travel to Thailand. It's rarely a problem, but I thought I would mention it. Now, here's a comment from Arturo Ago. Hi, Robert. One question. When applying for a multiple entry tourist visa, how many days should you indicate under intended duration of stay? 60 or 180? Uh, hi, Arturo Ago. Indicate 60 days or less, not 180 days. While the METV is valid for six months from the date of issue, you can only stay in Thailand for 60 days at a time, or 90 days if you get an extension. There is no advantage in putting a number larger than 60. So just put a number that's 60 or less. It doesn't affect the visa at all. Also, the form asks you to provide the details of an outbound flight. Should the flight be booked within 60 days from entry or 90 days, given that the first 60 days can be extended by 30 days? Now, Arturo was saying that his application was asking for details of an outbound flight from Thailand. What I said back to him is, my MET application from the U.S does not ask for details of an outbound flight from Thailand. They ask for travel booking confirmation of the first visit. They just want your ticket one way from your home country to Thailand. These applications do differ significantly from country to country, particularly the UK, which has a very buggy application. Now, when I apply for an METV, I supply only the one-way ticket from the U.S. to Thailand. I have never had a problem with this. When they say, of the first visit, I interpret this as being the one-way ticket for your arrival. They don't care about a return or onward ticket. This is a feature of the METV. So I would supply an outbound ticket. If the application for your METV requires an outbound ticket, please let me know the exact wording of the question on the application, because I'm not familiar with this. Okay, now, Arturo wrote back solving the mystery. I'm not applying via the e-visa, as the system won't let me. I'm currently based in a country other than my home country, so the system won't let me move forward. So I found this downloadable form, which I thought I would fill out, and send through to the Thai consulate to get the process started. The form asks for date of departure and flight number. It looks like a generic form from the Thai consulate in Sydney. And I wrote back, ah, now this makes sense, if it's a generic form. Normally, you shouldn't need to supply a return or onward ticket on the application for an METV. I would just supply a one-way ticket to Thailand and see what they say. So you had to supply this because you're using some generic printed form and not the e-visa application. Okay, and now we have a comment from Albion Sale on Course 5. Thanks for another helpful video. My passport is littered with stamps over the past year or so in and out of Thailand. Two tourist visas and three exemptions. However, I have just spent the past three and a half months at home in the UK. I recently applied for and successfully obtained an METV and will be flying to Thailand in October. Should I expect to be questioned at the airport by immigration? Or once you have the visa, there should be no problem. I'm also wondering the same thing of my two other entries in the next six months, probably December and March. So I wrote back, uh, hi Albion, I'd really be surprised if you were questioned on your arrival in Thailand because of your past stamps. I think your arrival on an METV 
is golden. I don't think you'll have any problem. It's remotely possible that if you try to re-enter overland and the METV is near its expiration in March, an agent might give you a problem. But if you stick to re-entries by air, I don't think you'll have any problem entering or re-entering Thailand. So just fly on over and have a good time. And uh, Innuendo commented, some of the more expensive tickets will allow you to change flight dates and times as you wish for about 50 euros. Hi Innuendo, thanks for pointing this out. It's always good to have the flexibility of a ticket that can be changed, even if there is a fee. During COVID, some airlines, like Delta, had a policy of no fee changes, even for economy. I looked up a random Delta flight to Thailand. Uh, it was economy class, but it says it was refundable with no fee. One good option is to buy your ticket with frequent flyer points. These are generally refundable, with the points being deposited back into your account. So if you get an expensive ticket that's fully refundable, there's not much downside to getting the ticket, knowing that you'll be able to cancel it and get a cheaper ticket in the future. So having the flexibility of changing or getting refunds on tickets is great. So those are the comments. I think some of them are pretty useful and uh, see you next time.